next item is the approval of the minutes for two meetings. One, our public hearing on June 14th, and then our regular business meeting on the same day. What is the pleasure of the board as it relates to both of those sets of minutes? I have a motion from Ms. Lane. Is there a second? Second. Second from Dr. Newell. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Any opposition? Passes five to zero. Next item is the consent agenda. Dr. Miller, anything on there you'd like to address? Uh, I will only say that it's routine for this time of year. There are five recommendations for employment, nine resignations, one retirement, four reassignments, one correction to a previous agenda, and five requests to raise funds. Fairly typical. What is the pleasure of the board to relates to the consent agenda? A motion for Ms. Lane. Is there a second? Second. Second from Dr. Mills. Are there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, let me know by saying aye. 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 Any opposition? Passes 5 to 0. Dr. Miller, you have your reports. Yes, sir. Tonight we will uh, talk about squats, and the collections for June were outstanding, coming in at $418,554.80. This is the highest single month of squats collections ever. It is only the third time we surpassed $400,000 in collections. And today, and we are averaging more than $330,000 a month in squats. Really good news on our squats collection. Under maintenance. Can, uh, can I ask you a question? Yes, sir. I, I, don't, um, I mean, I don't understand, so I'm asking for clarification, okay. I guess. So we budget. Say we try to do some capital projects and we budget based on previous collections and what we're doing and now we're collecting so much more what, what happens to the money say we we're were trying to build a bus parking lot that we never i got it. <laughs> but i mean so we can reuse it on some other capital project it doesn't just we're, we're collecting we're going to collect enough money in half a year to pay for the bonds that were related to the debt so the other okay. collections is what's going to pay for the, the parking lot the awesome bus. okay so, so it is going to capital projects for benefits. But we can so, keep doing it. Yeah. Yes, I mean, and that, that you know, points to the future projects that we want to accomplish. This is really good. Yeah. We can keep keep it going. That, that's going to be great because we'll um, have more revenue oh, yeah. to expand. Uh, under maintenance, uh, Jennifer, you can pull that PowerPoint up. Plant operations has had a very busy summer, completing many projects and getting ready for the start of the new school year. Some noteworthy projects include, uh, we've got another chicken coop at KPS, so they, they have a, some chickens there and they've been kind of free ranging, now they've got a home. Uh, keep them safe and the kids really enjoy that and um, that's a very nice mm -hmm. in their uh, garden area between the wings of the building. Also there's painting in several areas and schools, but I want to call the board's attention to the work done at Twin Oaks. Yes. You can't really tell from this view, but that school opened in 2009, so it was time to, re to freshen up the paint. Uh, there were some places where we're built in. Also on the exterior, you know, we built, if you go back, if you, the exterior, we built that awning on the gym, which is nice and new. Well, the, the paint on this uh, bus uh, cover was, was peeling in places, so that's been updated. It looks really good. I went over there and looked at it last week. And then Jennifer, if you want to advance, we also put a new uh, covering over where concessions are for the track and soccer facility. A new canopy there. I want to say too, the paving of the bus parking lot that we talked about earlier is it, it's on schedule. It's going really well. We hope that our buses will be able to park on that parking lot just after Labor Day. So that is on track and we've made good progress so far. The bus wash component, which is part of the project, that will be delayed until January because of a delay in getting materials. I think you probably read in the news or heard our whole nation's kind of dealing with that issue and that's the hold up on that particular aspect. Project. This is going to be a real blessing for our drivers because in the past they had to get up on a, um, a stand that was built up so they could climb up and spray the bus down and wash it. And uh, this will be a really nice feature of that new project at the bus. Question. Yes, ma'am. Um, when they push the trees back, you know, when 
they kind of extended the existing parking lot, mm -hmm. did it impact cross country because their track used to run somewhere in that vicinity? Uh, and it went back, I mean, I thought it went back a considerable distance from what it was originally. That's a very good question. It did not. I talked to Coach Ellington about that before school was out, just so that he would know what the scope of the project was. But they should be, they should be fine with the, with the, you know, it's a larger facility and this is so long because the bus drivers have had to park. I don't know if you've been by there during bus time. They're on the side of the road and they're across at the fire station. They're going to actually be parked in the in the back that facility the buses will be on the front side and the personal vehicles in the back but it does not it did not disturb any of his track that he used no, to my understanding is it did not now it did open up kind of where franklin's area is so before that was uh, the, all those buildings and maintenance equipment was kind of shielded by the trees you can really see through there now okay because i i mean i know that i knew that's kind of where that track was back there if it did, are they going to remove the trees? I mean, if, it, if they could push some on his little area? They'll make it ready. You know, this they're see, they've been practicing all summer, so they're already out there playing. Uh, the only adjustment I think they're going to make, maybe in the future, I know Mr. Ellington and Coach Ellington's talked about incorporating the track as part of the, the race course. You know, maybe having a bell lap kind of come in and finish. Um, oh, yeah. But I, I think that there was no problem as far as I know. I could be wrong, but I, I did talk to him about it, and we discussed it, and we talked to our contractor. Okay. And all the trees were collected, piled, and burnt, so there was none that were just pushed. We didn't, we didn't push anything back into the woods or anything. It was all... It did kind of look like it, though, didn't Well, when they first started, yes, ma'am, because they were knocking trees over and everything, but they did pull it all out, pile it, and burn. Oh, okay. All right. It just looked like... Finally, under reports, the Code of Student Conduct, you have a copy of the Code of Student Conduct um, with the changes in red. The Code of Conduct is a procedure, not a policy, so therefore it's being presented for information. Mr. Dallin's here. He's worked real hard on this. To, we uh, found one place where we had C policy and and when you went to the policy, it said C Code of Conduct. We had an infinite, infinite we circle. Have, it was infinite. Right. Yes. <coughs> We've been. He's worked with uh, Marvin at GSBA to make sure where we're where we need to be and our wording and up to date and ready for the new school year. Question, um, Mr. Dowling. Mm. Doctor Dowling. No. Uh, Mr. Dowling. Yes. Okay. Um, <laughs> is is this the first time we have incorporated pre-K? There was a red insert in it instead of just kindergarten through 12th grade it said pre through 12th grade so i just i hadn't noticed it before correct um, yeah we we uh we actually uh miss brim was uh she was at our code of conduct meeting and pre-k used to have their own little right from the start yeah but i i think what she said is that what we have in the code of conduct pretty much matches what they have and so pre-K, you know, they just kind of, she said it would fold right in if we added them. So it just, you know, kind of it's a one-stop shop now for everybody. Okay, also, is the Saturday school going down to the elementary level? I mean, or is it just middle high or where is I, it? I believe it's just middle high, but now don't, don't quote me on that. I'm not positive. Um, Saturday school has taken on several different meanings, um, you know, it, when we first made it, it was a, it was a punitive measure to keep a child from going to ISS. If it was a, right. if they did something that was punishable by a day in IFS in ISS, and they could, they could in lieu of doing that, they could elect to do Saturday school and therefore not have ISS on the right. record. Um, since then, it has also been used as a record uh, or as a means to remediate uh, academically uh, students that are. That failed tests or that are need of makeup work, they can sign up for Saturday school, uh, and there will be a teacher there from each subject, not to the high school level. Um, teacher there from each subject or from a, or from a few subjects that would remediate, and then if there was a test or an assessment to give, their classroom teacher would get that teacher the assessments, and the assessments could be given there. So, so it's taken out a few different meanings, but as far as conduct goes, 
uh, that's what we that's what we view Saturday school for. Um, I think they also do some Saturday schools at the middle school, but I think it's more remediation. Susan might know better than I do. Um, that it is for punitive measures, and I really I don't know about elementary school if they do that for uh, remediation measures or not. And that would be the parents' responsibility for transportation. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I got a couple. Uh, one, I know we're passing policy or working on policy for, um, I mean, it was in my training. I guess everything I trained about that day, now we're doing. But the, the at-home students, do we, if, if, if they're allowed to play, you know, I know we have a policy for kids or rural regulation. If, if they're not in school that day, they can't play. Mm -hmm. I mean, do, have y'all incorporated, have y'all, <clears throat> started to incorporate some of that stuff in that, the the legislature passed the law uh -huh. that, that allows homeschool students to participate and you'll see under uh, discussion action items we have the first hearing of a policy regarding the eligibility. Oh, so it goes into there yes and, sir okay yes sir and that's, the, that's i'm sorry that's, 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 that's actually in the code of conduct what we did is we put full-time students have to be in school three out of seven periods uh, so if it's if, if there's a homeschool child that's taking one class mm -hmm. in high school to you know to be part of a, a, of a, of a competition program um, then that student doesn't fall into that because they're not a full-time student right okay and then are they not considered full-time if they're only coming one, one period okay. yeah right the next thing when I was drug policy I, you see I, I, I'm not that familiar with what's going on in this world with CBD and stuff but I am hearing that um, it's kind of dangerous that some of these vape stores or cigarette stores are selling some sort of edible product yes. that is not, it's a synthetic form of THC, but it's not THC. And I, I think we need to be prepared for that if we're not already, because it's not a THC derivative, it's something similar to that. And, and that's pretty alarming to me that that's happening. Yeah, there, there are a lot of, uh, and it's happening especially in states where recreational use is, is legal now. Uh -huh. um, you know, there, I, I saw a bag of, it's a purple bag of Doritos that has, and it says, you know, THC infused. Now, whether that's... Yeah, but that, I mean, I think that's coming from a monitored legal state. What I'm seeing now is in Georgia, right up the road, these stores mm -hmm. are selling some sort of gummy that has, I, somebody called it like Delta something. I don't know that particular name. We, we had a meeting last year, it was a, a virtual meeting where we had the, the um, some of the drug agents that oh, okay. the sheriff's department on and he, he was sharing with us about what you're talking about, the edible gummy yeah. and the Doritos and even our record, something like a Reese's Cup. Uh, yep. It's just it's in there. It's being infused in a lot, but the, this right. didn't have THC in it, or it was a synthetic. It's kind of like what Barry Bonds did with steroids. He just changed the structure. It was still steroids. He just wasn't called that. I just want to make sure we're on. I'm sure. Yeah, I, I, I think that anything that that has, some, if it has a you know a psychoactive effect to it, or anything that's THC or THC like or THC, uh, you know, that causes an effect like THC. I mean, we would consider that a yeah, okay. you know, be along the line. But you're but you're exactly right. I mean, there's the difficult problem. The last five years, especially, it is very very. It's becoming very very difficult to keep up. You know, and so that's one reason the code of conduct is done online now is because if in the middle of the year there's something like this that uh -huh. comes up and we have to add to it, then then we have to add. To it. And it's a as Dr. Miller mentioned, it's not. A policy it's a Correct. procedure right. so they can in fact do that to right. be fluid and make those changes as they need to I mean obviously we make everybody aware that that's happening sure yeah I, I was just finding out about it and I would love at some point if we could to have somebody to educate me more on what's going on with that type of stuff in the here. world <laughs> sorry no, 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 no. I'm done <laughs> Anyone else? Questions about Miller for any part of his report? All right, hearing none, that you'll see a new section on our agenda entitled Public Participation. There was a uh, bill passed through the, the House and the Senate this past year, and the governor signed it to require a specific time for public participation. 
That's a three to five minute opportunity for members of the public to address us directly. Um, they've had that opportunity in the past. It just made it uh, more available and required it to be a specific part of our agenda. Um, Dr. Miller's office will have the specific requirements or notification requirements that if anybody in the public is interested in speaking to us, we'd be glad to hear from you. Next item on the agenda uh, is the discussion and action items. Uh, request approval for policy GBRH, which is the professional personnel leaves and absences. Um, I believe um, this is the second time this has been yeah. Yeah. Dr. Miller, any comments about that? Uh, well, as you know, the Paid Parental Leave Act was passed board adopted has changed our current leave policy. Mr. Dallin's worked very hard to make sure that we're where we need to be with this. And we're ready to move forward. What is the pleasure of the board as it relates to this particular policy? Motion. Motion from Dr. Newell. Is there a second? Second. Second from Ms. Lyon. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, let me know by saying aye. Aye. The opposition passes five to zero. The next item is a first presentation, as Dr. Is Miller's approval? already alluded to, a policy regarding the request approval. Hmm? It is request approval. Okay. Of the second one. Mm -hmm. Well, the notes here it says the first presentation. Oh, right. sorry, I've made a mistake. It is on that on the notes. It is the second reading. So it is for approval. Okay. All right. So it is for approval. For the policy regarding the eligibility of homeschool students to participate in the extracurricular or interscholastic activities uh, with the GHSA and others, uh, what is the pleasure of the board as it relates to this policy? I have a motion from Ms. Ford. Is there a second? Second. Mr. McDowell. Any discussion? Comment, Dr. Miller? I, I would like to say I think this is a good thing. Uh, my experience has been with working with homeschool families uh, that they've been great to partner with and this will open the door for, for more students and more participation and uh, we look forward to, to that. Have you had much interest in this call? I'm not aware. Have you heard of any, Mr. Dowling? I have not, um, but you know I, I know that <clears throat> just speaking past history, I know that there were two young men, this was back when I was principal, but there were two young men that were excellent golfers. As a matter of fact, I think they got scholarships to Georgia Tech, if I remember correctly, um, that if this policy was in place, they might would have played for our team and we might would have won the state championship. <laughs> the, the Baker boy? Uh, I think so. Yeah. Bradley, Bradley. Well, no, not Bradley. Uh, Bradley. Not Bradley, I'm sorry. Uh, but we, we, for many years, because we have such a good fine arts program, we've had homeschool children mm -hmm. participate, and this will open that door to some other areas, which, uh, which I think is, is, is exciting. We've had some significant interest in the ROTC program mm -hmm. from homeschoolers too, that would I also think it's going to open some doors. Are we prepared for some other doors that may open, like <laughs> residency issues and things like that? I mean, policing that. Or I, I mean, well, they have to be a resident. Of correct, the but but so, I mean, are we able to verify and do all that stuff? Yes, sir. In, any any residency issue, if we if we have reason to believe that it's not accurate or correct, we will follow up on that and, and look into it. Uh, to go to school in Lee County, you have to live in Lee County, and that that's applicable uh, except for you know teachers, children, uh, children who are residing on the military base and then of course to the McKinney Bento Wall which allows homeless uh, students in that scenario mm -hmm. who were previously in Lake County but have lost their home due to circumstances to, to continue uh, matriculating here. We actually have a bus that goes to, to Dory County and I think it works as well. But on a homeschool student policy, I mean, I know, I'm completely ignorant of this. I don't want to ask anything wrong. But like, wh what are there standards that they're graded by? Or have to, I'm sure there are, but, but you know, here if a kid's better than a subject, he ain't going out, he ain't running track. You know, um, how, how do, are we watching? Are we going to be watching? 
you know, could that happen? The same thing with the homeschool guy. When they a child who was struggling in school and said, "I'm going to home," that happens sometimes. Parents right. get, you know, they make that choice. That's their right, but that wouldn't be a way to evade um, the requirements for the sport. You have to be enrolled in one class. You have to also, um, you know, be qualified under the code of conduct to obviously. You're not in school where you can get in trouble per se, but, but you, you can't. Um, I, I think we'll be fine. Does it, I mean, we'll be fine. I'm sure I, I, there may be a loophole. Well, that's what I'm trying to figure out. Have y'all anticipated that, any loopholes? Well, that's you know, what the, the most famous example of that is Tim Tebow. Um, yeah. He was a great person and a great athlete who, who his family chose homeschool and he was able to participate in Florida. I, that's that's uh, you know opens that door so potentially you know, Kevin mentioned golfers I remember when I worked at the high school we had a young lady who was an outstanding uh, golfer and she she was in school very good student and she opted to homeschool uh, one year during her high school career so she could focus more on golf she, she ended up coming back to us and graduating and going on to college to play but um, you know some of those sports like tennis or golf I you know, we have kids. We, I'm, when Kevin was principal, we had a, a young lady that was uh, doing a lot of modeling out west yeah. and was, was traveling. She was doing very well in that area, but she was in school with us. So I think this just presents an opportunity to bring more people under the umbrella mm -hmm. of, of the good things we do here in Lee. I know, I'm very and, happy uh, for we'll it. Be better, yeah. We'll be the better for it. Cause yeah, we, absolutely. We, we've had yep. many, um, I, as a principal, Sure, Ms. Ford could say the same thing. We've had many wonderful families who homeschool for a period of time and then elected to bring their children to us and trust them with us. And we, that's been a good thing. And I think this will be as well. And it, I understand how a lot of a lot of uh, force behind it at the, in the legislature. Mm -hmm. and a lot of support. Any other comments? Hearing none, all those in favor, put it on by saying aye. Aye. The opposition passes five to zero. Seeing no other items on our agenda without any opposition, I will declare us adjourned. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.